y'all y'all and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to a much requested part two of my least favorite eyeshadow palettes. I did this um once and y'all really liked it. I mean basically YouTube loves negativity. I consider it constructive criticism but you know it's, it's negativity. So I scoured my brain and the palettes I've been through and curated another amount of ones that are just just like I said, this we're not titling this the worst palettes ever. We're titling this, you know, my least favorite because makeup is subjective. And one, there have been many times where I say, I hate this. And people are like, but, but I love it. And there are things where I'm like, I love this palette. And people are like, I hate it. You know, like I said, we all have different experiences. So this is just my personal opinion, my two cents on the matter. If you have not already seen part one, I will leave that link down below as well as I've got a playlist because I did all like top 10 best palettes, top 10 best limited, a highlighter, blush. I will leave all that down below if you'd like to uh, sprinkle in some positivity with the negativity. But let's just get into right into the palettes that I consider even more my least favorite. Okay, we're gonna start strong out of the gate. I'm actually surprised that I didn't include this in my first one, probably because I didn't want to have like a crap ton from one brand because I was trying, I was, I was trying to um, space out the, the criticism between brands. I reviewed this. I bought it because I have a problem. I bought it because I'm a collector. Uh, we're, we're getting better now. But the Too Faced White Chocolate Bar, which knowingly, when I purchased it, this color story was a joke. I'm not sure I'm aware of anyone who like absolutely loves this palette. I could be wrong. There could be people out there who this is totally their shiz. They're like, yeah, I want to look kind of like an undead candy cane. And if that's what you like, you do you, boo. Obviously, I am not going for normal. But y'all, color story aside, because whenever you go into a palette, you know, I feel like, you know, you can't blame the whatever being like, well, the color story sucked. Because if the color story sucked, you know, don't buy it. But color story aside, uh, this is one of those reaffirming moments that Too Faced doesn't have one of my favorite eyeshadow formulas. Their holiday palettes are crap. The mattes were just not good. I mean, no bueno. When 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 you when you are a high end brand and you can't do an eyeshadow just as good as ColourPop, there's something wrong. Like y'all have the money to do the research. Y'all have the money and the means to figure things out. And let me tell you, that formula was not it. And the shimmers were just kind of okay. I mean, overall, it was just kind of like a patchy, pasty, ashy mess. You know, it, you couldn't do a lot with it. What, what you could do with it, you ended up looking real sickly. And not like the sexy sickly, like when you do the red eyeshadow and the green and the orange or whatever. No, we're just talking just straight up dead. It's just, I mean, it's, it's I just, look, I bought it. Now, I'm a, cause I'm a freaking flipping moron. And for the longest time I've held on to it. I'm like, yeah, I'll use that color under the lash. No, no. Come declutter uh, Armageddon 2020. That thing's going. I do not wish for it to darken my collection anymore. Okay, then something. I don't even know if I've talked about it. Um, I'm not sure. Because y'all know I pre-film. Um, I, got, I got a life. Um, this is not my um, only. This is not my, my, my main job. So, you know. But um, I talked about this in a video talking about products I can't get rid of, and that's the Gwen Stefani Urban Decay palette. And, you know, it's my least, one of my least favorite palettes because I'm not sure what I was thinking. Well, I know what I was thinking when I bought it. Ooh, it's Gwen Stefani. Ooh, it's Urban Decay. Ooh, it's limited edition. I mean, that was probably exactly what was running through my brain at that moment. And it's just, I mean, it's a neutral palette. It's really, really neutral. It has the pink, the gold, and the blue. I love that pink. I used the shiz out of that pink before I knew what to do with makeup. And maybe if I, if it had been released like at a time where like I actually knew what to do with the eyeshadow, maybe it would have been better. But just like, even like in my collection or considering Urban Decay palettes I've bought, it's just 
not that amazing. Not formula wise, not color story. The packaging is beautiful. It's not 110% my aesthetic. I have the blush palette and I absolutely love that. Though I should honestly probably declutter both because they're old and I don't want to get some kind of infection on this. But overall, it's just kind of like, you know, even for as long as I'd had it, you know, I just wasn't reaching for it. You know, I did, you know, same tones in the Naked 2, you know, and I'd reach for that over this. I, I did use the pink though. Okay, another palette that, this is, it's always funny when, um, cause obviously these are my opinions and when you don't like something and it has really a really good rating and you're just like, what, what, what did I do? What did I do wrong? Because we don't ever purchase anything with the hope or the intent that it's gonna be bad, you know? And and then when people are like, it's amazing, it's fantastic, you're like, how do I, how do I do this? What, what What's going on? But the Lolita Por Vida palette. Now, this palette, it may not be, you know, awful. It's just one of my least favorites because I find that the matte quality is not up to snuff with what I know and what I've seen Kat Von D do. You know, it's kind okay it's pigmented it's not the most blessed you know best at blending and like I keep saying when you've got these higher end expensive brands that can't get a shadow that can blend as well as ColourPop or Juvia's Place or BH Cosmetics why are you so expensive because I tell you I have like a full thing of single shadows from ColourPop and that's a video I need to do duping out these palettes with ColourPop singles and I can get the same look but a lot better, a lot smoother, a lot more pigmented, a lot better blended. And then sort of the nail in that coffin were those big pans of highlighter that you look at and you swatch and you're like, yes, yes, this is going to be liquid metal across my ethereal eyelids. When in reality, it ended up just being kind of a chunky, difficult to work with, nowhere near as impressive as the swatches experience. It just wasn't anything that I consider to be very dynamic, to be very high quality. And especially for that like price point, it's like, come on. And then if we're talking about what you get for price point, this is a much more recent one, but the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde Palette, which I was suckered in. I was like, you know what? That packaging, that blue, that purple, that pop effect, they did that pop effect. And I got it and I used it and it's, it's okay. You know, but when you have, this is this, when you're an established brand and you have other palettes that exist that are permanent and then you come out with another palette that's just, just completely different. I'm like, wh why is it so difficult for that uh, quality control? Cause I love my new nude. I love my rose gold remastered. I love my desert dusk. And so knowing that formula, how come this formula is, is, is not the same, but it's the same brand, it's the same, same lit palette layout type thing. Why not? Like the mats were okay. You know, like I said, I didn't consider them to be the same quality as the Desert Dusk Rose Gold Remastered New Nude, not the ones from her Mini Jewel Tones palette or her neon ones. It was just okay. And definitely, definitely my least favorite palette from Huda Beauty just overall. I honestly just wouldn't recommend it because it just, it wasn't anything special. Special. Some of the shimmers were really fancy fancy, but a $67 palette isn't worth a few nifty shimmers. Then the next one is definitely not based on quality. I mean, it's, it's consistent quality for what it is. The Urban Decay Naked Reloaded. Because, you know, Urban Decay, I have learned, maybe they've changed. I used to love their shadows. I used to use the shiz out of their stuff. I had like every Urban Decay single that existed. And so the quality is just, you know, it's, it's on par for Urban Decay. I don't consider Urban Decay to have one of the best formulas on the market. You know, they're kind of there with Too Faced and Tarte and, you know, just kind of that 
area. But my main thing with this is, you know, I know a lot of people love neutrals. You know, I will occasionally do a neutral look, be reminded about how good my eyes look with a neutral look, and then go back to green. But this, you know, even neutrals aside, because Urban Decay have been doing neutrals with their naked, you know, whateverness for a while now. But when you take neutrals and do it to death because you know there are only so many um varying types of taupe that exist you know we've got the honey palette which is neutrals with a uh, pop of yellow gold we had this one which is neutrals with a pop of that corally red shade you know it's just it's it's just not very groundbreaking you know for urban decay even in the naked palette spectrum it was just very rudimentary and nothing that was really like yes this is amazing. It wasn't amazing, you know, formula wise. It wasn't really amazing color story wise. And I feel like even, you know, even for a neutral lover with the plethora of makeup that exists on the market and that is being released, I'm sure there are a multitude of neutral palettes from high-end brands, from less expensive brands that are more exciting and more beautifully curated and better formulated than the Urban Decay Naked Reloaded palette. Because at the time, what Urban Decay did was they're like, okay, we're discontinuing numero uno. Here's kind of a rehashed something something with a kind of red tone. They were trying to do the pop effect, didn't do it too well. And it's just, like I said, compared to so many other things out there, it's just kind of a really boring, rudimentary, already done neutral palette. Okay, this one is one that I got um, through Octoly. And this was kind of like one of those things where I'm like, you know, you get it, you order it, you want to try it because you want you want to see what the hype's all about. And this is a palette from Morphe, which I have since learned, aside from the Jaclyn Hill palette, Morphe does not have a formula that makes my heart go pity pat. And this is the 15T uh, Your True Selfie. I don't know if this is a holiday palette or what, but it had like that green and those like, you know, I was kind of digging the cool tone, green, smoky, grungy, you know, whatever. Now that green shadow, is beautiful. I love that. Um, I have decluttered the palette because everything else is trash. That green, I was like, mm -hmm. if I could, maybe I could try to depot that shiz. But y'all, uh, these mattes were probably some of the patchiest and most difficult to blend mattes I have ever used. Like the mattes from that Medusa's makeup, trying that, you know, trying the whole face of Medusa's makeup, those mattes were better and blended better than these mattes from Morphe's. I don't know if this is because they were cool tone, because they're deeper colors and those are harder to formulate, but that can only be used as an excuse for so many times. I mean, come on, you're a big, huge brand, get it together. But I was just like, I wanted to love it with the cool tones and the green and everything like that. And it was just, it was awful and not to mention the first time I used it because that the bundle from Octoly came with the palette and with a thing of brushes and I'm like everybody loves Morphe brushes this is gonna be amazing it was not amazing it was absolutely awful just not pigmented patchy didn't blend muddied it was just overall it was a very unfortunate experience so I don't know if this palette is limited edition or what but Whatever happened to it, it's, it's not something I would recommend ever. Okay, this next one is a recent kind of like discovery for me of not liking because back in the day, I like these. Now, I don't know if the formula has gone off. I don't know if, um, I'm not entirely sure what has gone into me no longer liking these, but the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Quads. Now, I used to love these and, um, I'm kind of concerned about what my makeup looked like back when I did use them. I took these to Tennessee with me because I was like, okay, I'm transitioning a lot of her stuff out of my collection, so let me get some use out of these. And they were just like really, firstly, they were really, really powdery. Like take Lorac shadows and magnify that fallout by like tenfold. And for that amount of powderiness, 
they didn't have a lot of pigmentation. They just kind of, you know, you'd be, you know, doing the thing and patting and blending and they would just kind of like piff up into the atmosphere. They do that thing where while you're doing it, you can see the powder just kind of rising up into the air. And I'm like, what happened? Well, I used to love these. These are great. These are wonderful. They muddied together. There was no distinction between colors. It just ended up like looking like one giant kind of conglomeration of just awfulness. So they weren't nice to work with and they just, like I said, they're just, I tried using them and I was like, as soon as I get home, these are getting decluttered. These are just, they just, they, just, they were awful. I mean, honestly, that, I mean, I don't think she pulled them off the market because she was going to make them vegan because she hasn't made them vegan yet and it's been quite a few years. I think she pulled them off the market because they sucked. I mean, it was just, it was not a cute look and I'm just like, wow, this is just, uh, not a not good. Then let's go into something that happened a long time ago on my channel, Pure, which I feel is an underrated brand, especially for their skincare. Released a My Little Pony palette, I believe, for the My Little Pony movie. Got to get that licensing in. Uh, I can't remember if I anti hold it or just decided I wasn't gonna buy it. I went in store. I bought it. It was an absolutely horrible experience. It was just oh my stars, because it had a lot of bright colors. Because friggity fracking My Little Pony, and the formulation was just it was so dry and patchy and unblendable. The colors, no matter what you used, would not work together. They were just like, no, I don't want to touch you. I don't want to see you. I don't want to be around you. They were just not having it. And then the couple of colors, you know, that were good. You're like, okay, all right, but just on a whole, it just was, I mean, quality wise. I like the cute little, they did like little quads of like, you know, they had Fluttershy and, you know, like Rainbow Dash, you know, and, and Rarity and you know, stuff like that. So that was cute. They get, did a good, you know, aesthetic, a good color story, but a good story does not a bad formula forgive. They were just absolutely awful. Like, oh, I hated that thing so blinking much. That was back in the day when I didn't believe in returning makeup and everything like that. And so it sat there forever. I tried to sell it on, on, um, Poshmark forever. And then I finally just said, screw it. And I gave it to my friend and I was like, here, you deal with that headache. I mean, I feel like if I, you know, cause I hadn't started my whole like palette roasting thing. Um, if I, th this thing came out, you know, last year, this, oh, I would have roasted the shiz out of it. Just not good at all. I feel like it was just something that was like, let's throw some really chalky rainbow colors in a palette and slap My Little Pony on it and all the My Little Pony fanatics, you know, we're gonna buy it. Definitely not the color palette of my dreams. Okay, then one that once again isn't based on quality. It's based on sort of personal preference. I've talked about this a, a myriad of times and I feel like there are gonna be some products you know, towards this like beginning of the year and like whatever that I'm gonna be have like beaten to a dead horse. Y'all are gonna be sick of hearing about them. But the Anastasia Beverly Hills Carly Bible palette, I did a review, well, it wasn't so much a review as it was talking about how much Anastasia has oversaturated the market in 2019. And this palette is okay. Now, would it, I keep saying this, I keep, like I said, y'all are gonna just be so tired of hearing this, but you know, had it been released in spring, you know, April, March, April of 2020, I feel like it just would have been better received because it wouldn't have been like the uh, ninth or 10th or 12th, whatever palette Anastasia had released in 2019. And the color story, it was just more conducive to a spring, you know, beginning of the year, you know, softer and, and sparkly and shimmery. And the formula isn't as good as modern Renaissance, soft glam, you know, even Norvina. They're just, it's, it was just, Okay, it wasn't given enough time to shine. You know, we had Jackie Ina, we had Alyssa Edwards, we had Norvina, you know, there were all these 
palettes and all these collabs and it was just kind of like another teeny tiny drop in the bucket. Now I have said that that setting shade, you know, that I usually trash on like nobody's business, I actually love that shade. I apply that all over my whatever and my eyeshadow blends like a dream. I mean, I would buy a single of that shade. But overall, it's just kind of like, you know, even more than like the sultry, which wasn't really, you know, my thing, even more than the sultry, I look at it and just kind of like, eh. It's kind of like, you know, a mishmash. You've got some of the Norvina palette. You've got some modern Renaissance. It's kind of like one of those things where if you have two or three Anastasia palettes already, you could probably come up with something really close to this. The packaging was beautiful, however, but but as a, as a power palette, as like a standout piece of makeup, not so much. Okay, something else. This is also from Huda Beauty. Now, Huda Beauty, I haven't used a lot from her brand. Um, I've only tried eyeshadows, but y'all know I love the new nude. And she came out with the mini whatevers of, you know, the, the mini nude obsession. So they're like a color extension of that larger palette. And I love that larger palette. And I saw these and I was like, Ugh. I think I did an anti-haul where I was like, you know, I'll just, I'll just kind of, you know, you know, I, I really want them. And then I bought them. Well, my husband bought them for me. And, and, you know, I did, a, I reviewed them and they were once again, they got like five stars on Sephora. And I'm like, what did I do? What am I just suck at makeup? Help me. And they were just, you know, kind of like, you know, the, the, the mattes were okay. You know, they weren't anything amazing, blendable, pigmented, you know, all that jazz. They tended to muddy. There wasn't a lot of differentiation in some shades. The shimmers were such a pain to work with. Like you had to beg and plead and barter and just oh my goodness it was like a hostage situation where you would give anything to that shimmer for it to look on your eyelid like it does in that pan but nine times out of ten that ain't what you're getting and it definitely wasn't what i was getting and just compared like like this is the running theme with this you know compared to what i've tried from them compared to what i've used they're just really low on that quality totem pole. It's like, get it together, people. Although apparently they've gotten it together, because like I keep saying, you know, it was, it was, you know, five stars, all those stars on Sephora, you know, it must be me. Then last but not least, another it must be me, the uh, Melt Cosmetics Muerte palette. Now the color story is absolutely stunning. It's deep, it's dark, it's decadent, you know. It's something we don't see often. It's very cool toned and blue. You know, you got that red and those two like minty bluey greeny shades that I absolutely love. And once again, this is something that has, you know, go at least four stars on Sephora.com, but I don't think it's available anymore. I don't know. But it's just kind of Mel Cosmetics has a fantastic matte formula. I have their 27 palette. I have their Gemini palette. I have some of their stacks and it is a beautiful formula. And even the deepest shades in say 27 and in Gemini are a pleasure to work with. They're smooth, heckin' pigmented, blendable. They're really well formulated. And the deep dark shades in these weren't well formulated and, and they acted and felt like, you know, they were very coarse. They were very, you know, patchy and harsh to the touch, you know, where you would get the pigment, that's where it stayed. So, you know, you hope to God that you get it where you wanted it to be. You ain't going to be able to blend that out. They didn't, they didn't layer well on top of each other. Just all in all, it wasn't the experience that I had had from Melt Cosmetics in the past. So it was very disappointing and underwhelming and then, you know, and considering all the melt eyeshadows I've tried, it would be one that I would recommend the least. I would actually recommend that one less than the Impulsive palette, which was something that I wasn't a huge fan of either. So yeah, that's just me giving my two cents on palettes that just, I mean, that just that were, you know, my least favorite. You know, some of them, you know, they're not horrible. They're not awful. I'm sure a lot of people really love them. But for me and my taste and my interests, they're just, 
something that didn't really jive with me for one reason or another. Even though some of them I, I, I really wanted to jive with them, the, the you know, the Huda Beauty and the, the melt, you know, you're just like, please work for me. But definitely let me know what you feel about these palettes. Like I said, this is all kinds of subjective. If you love it, that's great. Don't come for me for not loving it. And let me know a palette that is one of your least favorites. You know, let me know something that I should, you know, stay away. Or if it's something that I have that you absolutely, you know, hate. And I'm like, but wait, I like that. Because that's how the world goes round. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. And as always, keep it real. Mm.